I got a question about sins of attitude. How can you change your attitude? And I wrote down some things that I believe if you try these things, it will help you with those attitude problems. The first one is do what you do for God and not for man. If you do what you do for the Lord first and for other people second, then you'll always come out having a better attitude. Colossians 3.23 says, And whatsoever you do, do it heartily as to the Lord and not unto men. If you do good at work because you want to please the supervisor, well, there's going to come a day where you are mad at the supervisor and you'll stop wanting to work hard. You'll start hating the job. You'll stop doing the good things that you used to do. You may even start bad-mouthing the job to other people. You'll become bitter and have horrible thoughts about how you should have never worked hard for that company in the first place. You were doing it more for the supervisors or superiors instead of doing it for the Lord. You need to try to really focus on doing right because the Lord is with you and because the Lord wants you to do right. And not so much because other men are watching you or are around you. And don't do what you do just so other men can see you, give you a pat on the back, or be proud of you. Eventually, they're going to be envious of you if you do well. Or they're going to expect more out of you. Or even take advantage of you and want you to carry an unbearable load and you'll get burnt out and you'll get bitter and your job will become a dread and you will hate your life. The same goes for a stay-at-home mom. Don't just do what you do to please your husband. Do what you do to primarily please the Lord. Your husband will disappoint you. Maybe he doesn't appreciate anything you do. But the Lord appreciates everything good that you do. And feeling unappreciated leads to a bad attitude. Feeling like no one cares or notice the hard work you do can have can leave a bitter feeling in you and make you want to stop doing good. And if you think about it, it's not a bad deal that what you do down here goes unnoticed because it will get even more notice when you stand before the Lord. You didn't get rewards for it down here. So do what you do for God who won't betray you or backstab you or give you more than you can bear He'll always appreciate you, will never fail you. So, do what you do for God. And the next thing is to realize that keeping a good attitude makes you live longer. Proverbs seventeen twenty two, A merry heart doeth good like a medicine, but a broken spirit drieth the bones. There is something in us that has a desire to depart and to be with Christ, but at the same time there is something that makes you want to live longer on this earth. And if you want to live longer, then realize a merry heart doeth good like a medicine. Did you know that there are some people that you should just try not to be around? There are people that will cause you to have a bad attitude because they have a bad attitude themselves. They're very toxic. They are always bringing you down. Now, if it's your spouse, you're just going to have to deal with it and pray to the Lord for help. Same goes for your kids. But if it is just some friend you have or someone at work, then distance yourself because people will drag you down and you don't want to hold hands with the person who's just pulling you down. Get around people who have a merry heart and you'll have a merry heart. And a merry heart doeth good like a medicine. And if you walk around with a bad attitude, it can't be good for your heart. Bitterness can't be good for your bones. Stress can't be good for your, your muscles or your neck or your shoulders or or any of that, you just stay in pain because of it. Get rid of the things in your life that are causing you unneeded stress. The things that you can do without. Get rid of them. That will help your attitude. The next thing, strive to be like Jesus Christ, not someone else. In Philippians 2.5, it says, Let this mind be in you which was also in Christ Jesus who being in the form of God, thought it not robbery to be equal with God, but made himself of no reputation, and took upon him the form of a servant, and was made in the likeness of men, and being found in fashion as a man, he humbled himself, and became obedient unto death, even the death of the cross. So Jesus Christ took upon him the form of a servant. This is what you need to try to do. Quit worrying about making yourself the king of your life, and just focus on serving others. And many times you look at the big dogs at work or in just at church or in your life and you 
you want to be like these big shots and have a lot of people serving you and flocking to you. But you'd be more like Jesus Christ if you just focused on serving others, making them happy, being a blessing to them. When you go to work or church or somewhere else with the mindset of being the top dog there, you will end up getting into unneeded junk that will just wreak havoc on your happiness meter. Your happiness meter will go way down because you're going to end up bitter. You're going to end up mad at other Christians for no reason other than that they got recognition that you didn't get. And you'll get a, get a bad attitude and you'll start fault-finding, false-accusing, uh, looking at the worst in other people because you're in like a competition. You're trying to be above and better than others. And this just leads to a bad attitude. It leads to de depression. So do what you do for the Lord and not man. Strive to be like Jesus Christ and serve others in a merry heart doeth good like a medicine. You'll live longer. The next thing to realize is you look the way God wanted you to look. Now, some people have a bad attitude because of the way they look. Some people are very angry and sad and upset and hate people and hate the world because of the way they look. But God made you look the way you look. And obviously, you could have done damage to your body and you can look certain ways because of bad decisions you've made. But when it comes to how you truly look underneath what you and the world put on your body, God formed you that way. And in Psalms 139.14, it says, I will praise thee for I am fearfully and wonderfully made. In Jeremiah 1.5, it says, Before I formed thee in the belly, I knew thee. Romans 9.20 says, Nay, but, O man, who art thou that repliest against God? Shall the thing formed say to him that formed it, Why hast thou made me thus? God formed you. And maybe you do have an ugly face. Maybe you aren't as thin as you would like to be. Maybe you are very tall and you're self-conscious about it. Maybe you're like me and you haven't grown since the sixth grade. And you were always the smallest one in the class, so you always got picked last in sports. And Luke 12, 25 says, And which of you, with taking thought, can add to his stature one cubit? That's a rough verse for little people. No matter how much you think about it, you can't grow taller. But there are things about yourself that you can't do anything about. And you might as well just make the best of it. And if you're not so beautiful, then just you're just going to have to realize that there's perks to it as well. For example, you'll have less men or women flirting with you and... You won't be nowhere near as likely to be tempted to cheat because nobody's going to be flirting with you. If you're small, then you can fit in places people can't fit in, and you're mostly a lot faster. If you're super tall, then your wife can't hide stuff on top of the fridge when she gets mad at you. And you can just reach things that nobody else can reach. I mean, there's no matter what you got going on, there's going to be perks to it. There's going to be advantages and disadvantages. And if you want to have a good attitude, focus on the advantages of it. You don't want the disadvantages of, if you're tall and you, you don't like being tall, you don't want the disadvantages of being short. There's always uh, perks to what you got going on. And you got to focus on the perks of it. Uh, just make the best of what God made you, how he formed you. And that's easier said than done. But you have to do it. Another thing to remember is that nobody owes you anything. In Ecclesiastes 4.4, 4, it says, Again, I consider to all travail and every right work that for this a man is envied of his neighbor. This is also vanity and vexation of spirit. You see, many times people look at their neighbor and they're full of envy because they have something that they don't. And... When most times, the person that has this new car or new house or new whatever that people are envious of, they put in a lot of work to get that new thing, whatever it might be. And Facebook can cause you to see all these good things everyone has, and you never see the bad things that they have and the bad things going on in their life. And you start getting envious and wonder why you don't have what they have. And many times it is because you aren't putting in the work and sacrifice. That's big sacrifice that they did what you need to do is if you want to have a better attitude and quit feeling this way about other people get up every morning 
determined to work hard, and sacrifice. You need both. Work is a sacrifice, but you got to be sacrificing when you're not at work. Maybe you wish that you were more fit. Most of the people who are fit really had to sacrifice when it came to their meals. They had to run. They had to exercise. They had to sacrifice time to do all that. If you do that, then you can be fit. And if not being fit is causing you to have a bad attitude and to have a bad outlook on life, then push the plate back. Get really active. Use your time to get more fit. Uh, maybe you have a health condition, and that's a different story, but for most people, this is the truth. It takes time and sacrifice to get these things that you're seeing other people with, that you're envious, envious of. If you want a new car, quit blowing money on f big fancy dinners and expensive things and going to the convenience store every morning and spending $12 just on breakfast and uh, spending $10 in the vending machine at work. And over time, your money adds up. I mean, you're blowing all your money, and you wonder why you can't buy anything. You can't get a new car. Get rid of the cable TV and all these Netflix and Disney Plus subscriptions that you have. And quit buying the DVDs and the cigarettes and everything else. You're blowing all your money, and you wonder why you can't buy something. And you see all these other people around you, they, they, they're buying something. Maybe they're sacrificing. Maybe they're not buying fancy dinners. Maybe they don't have cable TV. Maybe they don't buy cigarettes and all these things. You need to learn to work and sacrifice. And you won't have to envy anybody. But they're going to end up envying you. That's the thing about it. But you'll be too busy. If you're working and sacrificing, you're going to be too busy... To envy that person. And also you're going to know what it feels like. To work and sacrifice. So when you see somebody with something else. You're going to be like wow they, they worked and sacrificed to get that. And you're going to be hap more happy for them. Because you're going to know the pain and agony it took to work and sacrifice to get that thing. Also remember the next thing is. You deserve worse. You think you got a bad situation. You actually deserve worse. It says in Lamentations 3.22, It is of the Lord's mercies that we are not consumed because His compassions fail not. It's of the Lord's mercies that we are not consumed as well. In Ezra 9.13, it says, And after all that is come upon us for our evil deeds and for our great trespassing, that thou, our God, hast punished us less than our iniquities deserve and hast given us such deliverance as this. It says, Seeing that thou, our God, has punished us less than our iniquities deserve. Job 11, 6. And that he would show thee the secrets of wisdom, that they are double to that which is. Know therefore that God exacteth of thee less than thine iniquity deserveth. You deserve worse. God's not giving you what you deserve. He's got a lot of mercy on you. Whatever it is you're going through, you actually deserve much worse than what you're going through. You don't like your wife? Well, you actually deserve to have a Jezebel witch of a woman who will cheat on you and won't even make you a sandwich. And if she did make you a sandwich, then you'd be scared to eat it because of what she might have put on it while you weren't looking. You don't deserve a good wife. So don't get mad if your wife is lacking in some areas. Same goes for your husband. You don't deserve to have an easy job. You don't deserve a car, let alone two cars. You don't deserve a tricycle. If you have anything, you have more than you deserve. If you will remember that, then you won't be unthankful. You won't get a bad attitude about what you have. You'll be like, when you have a bad thought about your wife, you'll be like, well, I deserve much worse. I thank God that I have her and not this witch of a woman over here. You won't get unappreciative when you realize you could, ha you should have worse. You won't get unappreciative of what God has given you. In Ecclesiastes 5.19 it says, Every man also to whom God hath given riches and wealth, and hath given him power to eat thereof, and to take his portion, and rejoice in his labor, this is the gift of God. You see, whatever portion God has given you, be happy with it. 
because you didn't deserve it anyway, you actually deserve worse. You don't deserve better. And it's the gift of God to be able to wake up every day and, and rejoice in the portion that God's given you. The next thing is see people as souls. See people as souls with feelings. See people as a mother or a sister or a brother or a father. You see, many times you have a bad attitude with people around you. And you might not say it, but that shows that there's something in you that thinks you matter more than they do. And it says in Romans 12, 3, For I say, through the grace given unto me to every man that is among you, not to think of himself more highly than he ought to think. You see, you're no better than anybody. Everyone has problems. Everyone deserves to be treated with respect. Um, you're not seeing people how you ought to see them when you have a bad attitude towards them. And every person you run into is either a wife of somebody, a daughter of somebody, or a sister of somebody. If it's a man, it's a, then that man is a husband or a son or a brother. And they matter to somebody, even if they don't really matter to you. And if you hurt them, it will most likely hurt the people that they love as well. And when you have a bad attitude around someone, it can cause them to get a bad attitude and affect people in their household. You should see pe other people as souls. They are people. You see, the, the problem with, you know, a lot of people is they're going around and they, they just see people as not a real person. It's like they're living in some type of fantasy world or video game where they're the only real person or something. You should see other people as souls. They are people that God made, and they do matter. They have feelings. You need to be mindful of that. And a lot of people like to go around and brag and say, I don't care to hurt your feelings and all this stuff. But many times, those are the ones that are the most sensitive of them all. And the Bible says in 1 Timothy 5, 1, Rebuke not an elder, but entreat him as a father, and the younger men as brethren. You see, if you're around older men then you respect them older men like you would your father. If you're around younger men, then respect them like you would a brother. The same for females, the elder women as mothers, the younger as sisters with all purity. Imagine if everybody went around being good to people like they were supposed to treat their father or their brother or their mother or their sister. The Bible says in Philippians 2, 3 through 4, Let nothing be done through strife or vainglory, but in lowliness of mind. Let each esteem others better than themselves. Look not every man on his own things, but every man also on the things of others. See people as souls, souls that will live forever somewhere. You see, what you say and do, and do to them, matters, and, and it has effects that go beyond just the moment you're in. Your words can be like daggers that affect somebody the rest of their life, or they can be an encouragement. And if you want to have a better attitude, then when you're around people, consider how it is you're seeing people. Do you see them as souls that matter just as much as your soul, or, just, or do you just see them as some type of robots living in your world that you can treat however you would like? Because deep down, you feel like they don't matter as much as you do. And they don't have as many problems as you do. Everybody's got problems. Everybody's having a hard time. The next thing you need to do is you need to put more focus on your family. In 1 Timothy 5, 8, it says, But if any provide not for his own, and especially for those of his own house, he hath denied the faith, and is worse than an infidel. If you go on the job with a focus on your family and how they're counting on you, then it will fix your attitude. You see, some people I work with who have families who are counting on them to provide, they have the best attitudes. They realize they have to be there. They realize they need a job. They realize there's someone else that matters besides them. And they can't just quit and get mad over every little thing. And I know of men who have such a bad attitude that they won't work or provide for their family because they can't stand to be under a supervisor. They can't stand to have someone telling them what to do. And their focus is on their self. When you start thinking about yourself and getting a bad attitude, then look at the faces of your wife and kids. Get pictures of them and look at them. I have my kids' pictures at the front of my Bible. And if I start getting mean and wicked and sinful and a bad attitude, then I look at those pictures. 
and it and it brings me back to reality. It calms me down. I have some people counting on me, and it matters how I live, and it matters what I'm doing. I can't just get a, an attitude and quit or get mad and smack somebody upside the head. You know, I need to fix my attitude because if I got a bad attitude, it's going to affect everybody around me. The next thing is you need to use your time wisely. In Ephesians 5.16, it says, Redeeming the time because the days are evil. The days are evil because people are, aren't are using their time wisely. If you, if you use your time wisely, then you really won't get a chance to have a bad attitude. If you do all the things I've told you, then you're really, you're really not going to have time to fly off the handle or worry about what other people have that you don't have. You'll have your own things. You'll have your own goals. Uh, using your time wisely causes you to have very little time to do things that can give you a bad attitude. You don't want no idle time. You don't want there to be time where you're just kind of just standing around staring. Uh, being in, being so into uh, in, in other people's lives and, and nosy and other people's business can cause you to have a bad attitude. I don't have time to care about what everybody else is doing what everyone else has got and the, what they're putting on Facebook. It says in 2 Thessalonians 3, 10 through 12, For even when we were with you, this we commanded you that if any would not work, neither should he eat. For we hear that there are some which walk among you disorderly, working not at all, but are busybodies. Well, they're working not at all, but they're busybodies. They're just walking around, getting into everybody's business. Now them that are such we command and exhort by our Lord Jesus Christ that with quietness they work and eat their own bread. Work and worry about eating your own bread. That's going to lead to a better attitude. The next thing is get your thought life under control. It says in 2 Corinthians 10 to 5, Casting down imaginations and every high thing that exalted itself against the knowledge of God and bringing into captivity every thought to the obedience of Christ. Quit having all this time to where you can think about stupid junk. Like when you're at work, get some index cards, put some Bible verses on it, pull it out of your pocket, read four words on it, recite them in your head over and over until you got the verse memorized. This way your mind is staying on something other than your own pity parties. The next thing, quit comparing yourself to others. In 2 Corinthians 10, 12, it says, For we dare not make ourselves of the number or compare ourselves with some that commend themselves, but they measuring themselves by themselves and comparing themselves among themselves are not wise. When you go around comparing yourselves to other people, thinking, well, Look what they got. Look how easy they have it. Look how good their wife is. Look how good their husband is. Look at this. Look at that. You're going to be having a bad attitude. It's That's a bad way to think. It's not good for your thought life. It's going to make you have a bad attitude. It's going to make you bitter. So quit comparing yourselves to other people. Focus on doing what you need to do. And everything else will fall into place. And you'll have a lot less time to have a bad attitude and to get worked up about stupid stuff. But this has just been some quick advice on having a better attitude.